Greats Sneakers. Greats is the first men's sneaker brand from Brooklyn. Born in Brooklyn. At greats.com. They never sacrifice quality. Use premium materials. Style, quality, value is what they offer. Greats.com. Go to www.greats.com for 15% off. 15% off. Punch in the code Rappaport. R-A-P-A-P-O-R-T. Greats.com. All right, this is the Iron Rapport Podcast. Coming live from the Gloom Tomb, the Iron Rapport Podcast Studio, the West Coast Gloom Tomb, which is actually a, a really, really high tech, fancy studio, but I call it the Gloom Tomb because that's the mood. That's the effect, you know, that, I, that I'm going for. I don't even know what to tell you, man. There's so, every time I pick up the mic to record, and trust me, there's a whole staff of people around right now. You know, some people uh, record their podcasts in, 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 you know, by themselves, all by their lonely. Me, I'm recording this podcast. There's a staff of people here to support my every move, everything I think of, all my stats and everything. It's not true. I'm alone in a fucking room doing this it's a sad fucking world that i'm doing this but but i love it and i love the fans of the iron rap poor podcast i'm not just saying that to, to to kiss your asses let me tell you something when you guys reach out to me on twitter when you guys reach out to me on instagram i've had people come up to me on the street and compliment the podcast it means so much because this is all me it's all me my man G Monetti and, 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 and my producers, the masterminds, my man Jordan Winter, you're like, I don't give a fuck. And my other, my other guy, Miles Davis, you're like, I don't give a fuck about him either. But I do, okay? But we appreciate the love. We appreciate the support. All the, the Twitter shit talking, all the people that are quoting the Iron Rapport podcast, the loaf talk, you're talking about your fuck style is buck wild. People have come up to me on the street and told me that they like to sugar dick now. I love it. Okay, because that's what we're, we're into here at the Iron Rapport Podcast. We're into sugar dicking. We're into loaf talk. We're into it all. I don't know if you heard me on uh, Shaquille O'Neal's podcast, the big podcast, but I uh, threw some loaf talk at, at, at Shaq. He loved it. How could you not love it? Talking about your loaf, it, it makes people happy. It makes people smile. It's PG-13, and it just brings a, it just brings a sense of joy to everything. Uh, but let me see. We're gonna get into all sorts of shit today. I'm gonna call G Monetti. We're gonna talk about uh, Serena Williams. Talk about tennis because I, you know, Serena Williams just won the Wimbledon last week, and uh, I was disgusted, disgusted by by the the comments uh, about her body, uh, the rate, the racism. It's so rampant. It's fucking disgusting. These animals. I fell in love with Serena Williams in about 1998. In 1999, she was at the U.S. Open, and, and her ass had crescendoed into a thing of beauty. It, it was like a, a, a Mozart sonata or, or a, a beautiful painting by Degas or a, a melody sung by Pavarotti. Or, 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 or played on the, the trumpet by Miles Davis or whatever your cup of tea is. But her ass, I, I remember seeing it. Like, I remember seeing it at the U.S. Open, which is the tournament that gets played in August in, in, in New York City in Flushing, Queens. And, and I remember being like, oh, my God. Like, I had never seen anything like that in athlete. I fuck with Serena Williams hard. I'm such a fan. She has to be the greatest female athlete of all time she's uh surpassed everything um her story with venus and 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 the father and i'm not going to go into the story is an only in america fairy tale once in a lifetime lightning strikes thing of beauty and the tennis community you'd be surprised to how much i know about the tennis community and the reason why i know so much about tennis is because my father Disco Dave Rappaport, who is now 82 years old, he's not playing tennis anymore. He's starting to get back into it. But he was a fantastic, I mean a fucking fantastic tennis player. 
beautiful backstroke, beautiful strokes, museum quality strokes. Great tennis player. You know, so I've been around tennis my whole life, going to try to learn to play with my dad. And, you know, every now and then he would take me to matches and shit like that. And I was never that good, but I played a little bit. But I am definitely a fan of the sport. And, and, and I love watching the Williams, the Williams sisters kick fucking ass from day one. And, and I love to continue to watch them kick ass in doubles. And when, when Venus is healthy, watching her kick ass, and Serena just dominating, dominating, smash mouth, hard nose tennis, whooping that ass. There's no, there's no fucking, she has no rivals. There, she has no rivals. And you dumb fucks who don't know anything about tennis and they're commenting on the only reason why she wins is because she's so strong. You dummy. The only reason why she, she serves so hard is because she's so strong. You fucking dumb fucks. You racist player hating fucks. Let me tell you something. What I do know about tennis, and I fact checked this with my dad, Disco Dave Rappaport. Serving has nothing to do with physical strength. It's all leverage. It's like pitching a baseball. Are baseball pitchers big muscular guys? Sure, there's guys like CC Sabathia. I mean, they're built. But, but it has nothing to do with physical strength. It has everything to do with leverage, you dumb fucks. You dumb fucks. And if you think Serena Williams can dominate and be as great as she is just because of strength and physical, physical attributes, you're also a dumb fuck and you're a player-hating racist dumb fuck. She's kicking ass skill, determination, Hard work, God-given strength, God-given ability. But if you think God-given ability will get you to be the greatest female tennis player of all time, you're just a shithead. You don't know nothing. And people are talking about uh, her, her, her grunting. And, and they, they, Did you ever not hear Monica Sellis? It sounded like she was taking like little diarrhea shits every time she hit the ball. The great Monica Sellis. You'll never see another athlete like Serena Williams in, in, in tennis appreciated while she's around, okay? She's fucking fantastic. And for people to say she looks like a man and her body this and her body that, you fucking animals. Let me tell you something. People that don't, that don't like her body, it's because you can't handle a woman like that. You don't know what to do. With a real woman like that. Her body is a thing of beauty. And that, and I mean this with all due respect, Serena. That ass is a thing of beauty. I mean that with all due respect. Venus Williams is fucking goddess. Both of them. I love them both. Love them both. I've met them. I've told them. Told them I love you. Respect you. And you dummies that don't know shit about tennis. And they play or hate on this woman when she wins. It's disgusting. Dojovic's dad is a, he's banned. You know the player Dojovic? His father's banned from matches because he's such a fucking lunatic. He's in there being be an asshole. He's not even allowed at the matches. They don't mention that. Serena Williams, they're, 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 they're arguing over how, there is no argument. It's like saying like Michael Jordan. There's no argument. She's the best female tennis player of all time. She's going to continue to dominate probably for the next Two or three years if she remains healthy, which I think she will, hopefully. And that's it. She's going to break every single record. She's going to kick Maria Sharapova's ass every time and everybody else who comes into it. She competes like a motherfucker. And I'm, it's just disgusting. The racism on Twitter and the racism on the internet and people. And, and, and my girl was like, you know, I can't believe people think like this now. I can't believe people. You know what it is? It's just because there's a forum for animals to fucking to vent the racism, the dirty... If you read some people's Twitter feeds, holy fucking shit. It's disgusting. And these people are on there talking about Serena Williams and her body and she looks like a man. She looks like a man. Serena Williams, the great, beautiful Serena Williams, she looks like a man, but Bruce Jenner is the beautiful woman. This is what we're dealing with in 2015. She looks like a man... And Bruce Jenner, we're supposed to be force-fed how beautiful Bruce Jenner, Caitlyn, fuck, Caitlyn Jenner looks. This is what's going on. This is, and it's not necessarily the same people, but it is sort of. Okay, so we're going to get into that. 
It's, uh, you know, we're getting, we're gearing up. We're almost there. Fantasy football. I have my Howard Stern fantasy football draft coming up in August. And, 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 uh, I, I honestly, I, I, at this point, I could give a shit about the NFL in terms of my teams, my Giants. Uh, uh, right now, I mean, obviously, I want them to do good, and I think uh, the Giants are they're they're going to be they're going to be good. We got my man Cruz coming back. We got Odell, Eli. You can't really fuck this up, uh, but it's all about fantasy. The uh, Howard Stern fantasy football league and kicking ass. Smash Mouth Fantasy Football. American Giant sponsors the I Am Rappaport podcast. Go to American-Giant.com. Check it out. T-shirts, sweatshirts, American-made, American-manufactured. Really good quality. Soft, rugged, hoodies, sweatpants, all of it. American-Giant.com. I wanted to talk about uh, Brian Cranston. He shitted on a fan, humiliated this kid uh, at the Comic Con, which uh, has turned into a big, uh, a big deal now. Comic Con is a big place for TV shows and movies to promote themselves. It, it, it used to just be like, I mean, the guy who created this thing is probably laughing all the way to the bank. I bet you it's not even like a comic book nerd guy, but this this festival, this Comic Con festival, is like a staple of promoting. And, you know, all the, 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 the freaks and geeks and everything in between, they show up in their costumes. I think last year at Comic-Con, uh, they were, there were some walking dead zombie people, and they were harassing people in cars, and they ran them the fuck over. You're a zombie, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, but this year at Comic-Con, Brian Cranston, who's a great actor, one of my uh, favorite shows of all time, of course, Breaking Bad, the great Walter White, played by Brian Cranston. I think he won the fucking Emmy like five years in a row, and, and, and as he should. But a fan, some dorky nerd kid, uh, introduced himself to Brian Cranston, and he was basically this kid was a, like he looked like a nineteen year old kid, definitely like you know was starstruck and excited to to talk to him. And he basically, I think the question that he had, I, I didn't fact check it, I saw it, but when I'm doing this now, I didn't fact check anything. But the question that he asked him was how he how he liked New Mexico, which is where they filmed Breaking Bad. And uh, in front of the whole crowd of people, Brian Cranston said, I visited your mother. And the crowd laughed and laughed and laughed. And this poor kid was humiliated. And then Brian Cranston dropped the mic like he was so proud of shitting on this kid. And, and if I was the kid, you know what I would have did? Uh, he should have been like, hey, fuck you, Walter White. All right. You don't even have any lips, Brian Cranston, because if, if you remember, Brian Cranston was one of the first people that we mentioned uh, as famous white people who doesn't have lips. Uh, that's what I suggested that kid should have said to him. Hey, uh, fuck you. How about that? You want to make fun of my mom in front of everybody? Everybody's laughing at me now. Go buy some lips, hotshot. So I, I didn't like seeing that. I don't know if he apologized or not, but, uh, you know, I wanted to just uh, shout out... Uh, Brian Cranston for shitting on that kid. I'm shitting on you. Okay, you shit on him. Now I shit on you. I shit on the fact that you you you, you actually have made something of yourself, and your mouth uh, uh, looks like uh, just a uh, like an open sore. That's what your mouth looks like because you have no lips. It's just like a black hole and these flat lips. And uh, Ariana Grande, who I could give two shits about, she got into some shit, which was it was disgusting to see on video. But but she was in a donut shop, and she was first rude to the to the guy in the donut shop, which is never acceptable because you know we we, we don't promote nor uh, or or back and support disrespect here at the Iron Rapport podcast. Um, but Ariana Grande, uh, while she was in the donut shop over Fourth of July weekend, she licked the donuts like I, I and 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 it's the whole flack that we're going to press charges because it was breaking some sort of health, health code thing and i don't know it was probably maybe she likes like a little uh you know adhd like she couldn't help it like a you know like she she felt the temptation and then she licked it and obviously it's filthy it's disgusting and you know she was doing it with her friends but i cannot say that i have not done shit like that Okay, I do not remember if I've ever actually licked donuts. 
I maybe I have, maybe I haven't, but but in the last you know month, have I been at the supermarket in the fish fish line? Have I been there and have I stolen a jumbo cocktail shrimp at, right out of the bowl behind the counter? Yeah, maybe I have, maybe I haven't. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to confirm or deny that I, that I have or that I have not. But I will say that in the last few weeks when I do go to the supermarket and I am at the fish market, like if the coast is clear, it's a possibility that I maybe am the type of person that have stolen a jumbo shrimp thing right from behind the counter and eaten it right fucking there. And then I take the tail off the jumbo shrimp and I throw it on the floor in the supermarket. I'm not confirming or denying it, but those thoughts have been in my head. Okay, some people might say I have done it. Some people might say that I haven't done it. Have I stolen a handful of jelly beans at the supermarket from the candy section and put it in my pocket and continued to shop while eating jelly beans right out of my fucking pocket? Yeah, I've done it. When I see those chocolate covered almonds and, 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 and raisins in, 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 in the candy section of, of the supermarket, do I take a full handful and stick them in my other pocket? Your motherfucking A right. Uh, 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 this happens. I do shit like that. Okay? I, I, I get a sensation of doing it. it it's, it's a fucked up sensation. It's technically, I think it's stealing. Um, I don't know what charges I could be brought up on or, or like what would be the, uh, the amount like, you know, the, uh, maybe it's like $1.06 or something for a handful of jelly beans and, you know, probably like, you know, close to $1.99. My hands are big when uh, I may or may not steal chocolate-covered almonds. But I'm just saying I, I, I'm not a fucking dog where I'm going to lick a donut, but I understand. I, I understand what Ariana Grande was doing with that, okay? I, licking it, that's not going to satisfy me. I want my one to actually physically tasted but I have been known to do weird shit like that in places of business where there are things if I if I take my son and his friends into one of those candy stores you know they have those candy stores and 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 they have like those chocolate covered balls covered in the silver shit I'm going to take some and I'm going to put them in my pocket and I'm going to continue shopping and keep eating them so I get it Ariana okay but but don't lick it like, take the whole thing and, and take a bite of it and throw it away. Don't lick it like a fucking, like a pigeon, okay? You know, ha, ha, just think about it a little bit more. I don't know. She's young. I don't give a shit. <sighs> I saw this fucking guy, this uh, surfer, the other day. Live television during a surfing broadcast. This cocksucker got attacked by a shark. He fought the shark off. Some surfer guy. That's why I don't fuck with that surfer. I tried to surf once with my man Sal Masakela. You know, Sal Masekela from X Games fame and, you know, he does all kind of shit for the Olympics. My man, we were in Hawaii. I had just gotten divorced. He said, I got, I got to get you the fuck out of here. I got to get you. Your mind is all fucked up. You got to come to Hawaii. Fine. I went out there with Sal. We had a great time. And he was like, I got to get you surfing. You're, 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 you're in the mode. You're very aloha. I don't know what the term they say. They got that Hawaiian talk. And it's not namaste, which is my hot yoga, which I'm going to get into later because I was in hot yoga the other day and I fell. During the class, in a tree pose, I, I fell. And I'm about 215 pounds right now. And I was sweating like, uh, you know, like you could literally wring the sweat out of my shirt. Like, it would drip. And I, and I fell. And it was a whole thing. And, and I was chastised in, in, in the class and it, whatever. But, but I, I have, I have um, surfed, uh, you know, not very well. I, I, I don't understand surfing. Uh, the one thing I did get to understand is you paddle the fuck out, which is a treacherous workout. It, it's so hard to paddle, 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 paddle. And then you, 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 you get out there and you may or may not get up. And then you fall and you get tumbled and you get hit in the fucking head with the surfboard. And anything could happen to you. <clears throat> anyway, this professional surfer, it's all over the internet. This fucking guy's out there getting ready to catch his wave. And the fucking shark attacked him. And he fought it off. And then, and then the boats came out there and they saved them, whatever. But that, that's why I don't fuck with the ocean, man. I, I go into waist deep and, and, and I'm, not, I'm not ever able to just totally relax. I'm out there in waist deep and I'm looking and I'm watching and I'm trying to see what's going on. I'm never totally fucking relaxed out in the ocean because I don't fuck with sharks. And I saw Jaws at a drive-in 
1976 or 77, whenever it came out. Saw it at camp. We went to a drive-in. And, and you don't forget that. Scared the shit out of me. I don't fuck with sharks. I don't do sharks. And now people are getting bitten all over the place. They tried to take out this surfer. They're biting people in North Carolina. I don't fuck with sharks. I don't even like lakes. You know, I don't like any of that shit. I like, you know, man-made pools and stuff like that. Because if it's any kind of water that I can't see to the bottom in, I'm not totally comfortable. Okay? I'm not totally comfortable. I want to, like, I've been in Thailand and the water, you can see at the bottom. I'm cool with that. But if I can't see what I'm walking on and see what's coming and see where it's coming from, I'm always a little, you know, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm shaky. I'm on edge. This is the I Am Rapport Podcast. The I Am Rappaport podcast is sponsored by Casper Mattresses. Casper.com. It's an award-winning sleep startup. Go to Casper.com. $50 off purchase of any size mattress. Put in the code Rappaport. R-A-P-A-P-O-R-T. Casper Mattress in New York City. You could keep the bed for 100 nights. You could get your freak on for 100 nights. If you do not like the bed after 100 nights... You can return the mattress within 100 days. That's a guarantee. The, the, the bed will be delivered between two to five days anywhere in the United States and Canada. Same day delivery in New York City. We do not plug, we do not support, we do not take sponsorship from anything we have not tried and we are not passionate about 450%. So uh, I'm heavy into my yoga. I talked to you guys about my CrossFit, fucking done with it. Maybe I'll get back into it, but I'm done with it for right now. Then I talked about my exercise classes. They could fuck themselves too. I'm in there and the hot yoga. I do the hot yoga with my girl. She's hardcore, hard body karate in the hot yoga. And she got me into it. And, uh, you know, you go into this room. I don't know if you've ever, ever done yoga, but I, I've said this <clears throat> and I'm, I'm proud of this because my physical attributes are, are far and few between. But uh, one of the things that I do have going for me is my flexibility. So I, uh, you know, I, I, I tend to feel like I'm doing well in yoga. Um, excuse me, I'm sipping a little uh, Snapple with a straw. I decided to, to not drink a, a Snapple. I have one of those plastic straws that bends. So I'm snip, sipping a Snapple with a straw. That's a uh, helicopter. I have the door open here at the gloom tomb. Excuse me. It's a, what they call a ghetto bird. In Los Angeles, although I'm not in the ghetto, but, you know, from the Ice Cube songs. Anyway, the uh, hot yoga. So you go into this room. Yoga is a very interesting thing because it's all about breathing and all that shit. But you go into this room and you walk into the room and it's like 102 degrees already. When, you, but when it starts, literally, I'm not bullshitting you, like 102 degrees. The class is between 102 and 105 at its apex. It varies. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's 101. It's fucking hot as shit. As soon as you get in there, it's like a sauna that's not turned on. And the thing about yoga that's interesting is you're supposed to be breathing all the time and you're stretching. And, and, and this is the clientele in a yoga. Here's, here's what I've learned about yoga. Yoga is not for fat people. Now, it's not saying it's not for fat people, but if you're, if you want, if you're a fat fuck and you're trying to lose weight, I don't think yoga is the place to be. You need yoga along with something else because things have gotten too far gone. OK, so you, you need to like do yoga and then like run or do yoga and do CrossFit or do yoga and get your ass on a treadmill. But but I go to these like these hybrid classes. So they're yoga workouts. So you do basic yoga, but then they, they add weights and you're working out and they do cardio and all that shit. But the thing about the hot yoga classes is that there's like there's a lot of women in there and they come in there. They do come in. It's in Los Angeles, too. I haven't done yoga in New York yet, but they come in there. There's a lot of fucking tail in there. A lot of broads in there, and they come in there with the yoga booties, and they come in there with the yoga asses, and their Lululemon shit, and, or Lululemon, Lululemon, I don't know, it's Lululemon or Lululemon, there's a yoga brand, Lululemon or Lululemon, I don't know, but, uh, and there's a lot of fucking girls in there, and they're in shape, but I don't think it's the, pl like, when I go to the CrossFit classes and I go to the other workout classes, there's people that are in shape, and then there's people that are trying to get into shape. I'm somewhere in the middle, okay? I, 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 I am somewhere in the middle. I'm not a fucking, I'm not a physical specimen. Like, I'm not going to win any, like, you know, you know, uh, what t-shirt contest, but uh, I'm not going to lose either. 
You know, I'm in the middle. Like, uh, you know, I got a nice, nice dad bod going, but I'm into this yoga and it gets you, it gets you lean and mean. Like it gets your shoulders and you get you toned. It's a good toner. But with the workout in the hot yoga, any fucking way, the point is, is that, you know, everybody's in there with their namaste and their breathing and everybody comes in. And the guys that come in there, they're straight out of central fucking casting. Nine times out of fucking ten, it's really true. They have a fucking ponytail in a man bun. These cocksuckers are coming in there with no shirt on. Now, I get that. Uh, it's because it's hot yoga and you sweat like a pig. Some people might prefer to do that. But the fucking arrogance to come into the class. First of all, I don't even think, see, the reason why I wear the shirt during the yoga class, I don't give a fuck what my body looks like. It's dark. No one's looking at me anyway. People are in there ready, they're trying to survive. It couldn't have been that much hotter on the fucking trains to Auschwitz. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say that, but it, it, it's so fucking hot in this class. You're, you could wring your shirt out afterwards, sweating through the shirt. Like, like you came out of a bath, like you sweat like a pig. And then you're working out in there. It's like you're not just doing the yoga, you're fighting the elements. But these cocksuckers, they all come in. They come into the class with no shirt. So they're walking the hallways with no shirt. There's been a couple of dudes that look like shit that work out with no shirt. And, and I thought, like, maybe, maybe it's not an arrogance thing. Maybe it's not a vanity thing. I think some of these people, like, it's more comfortable. But for me, you're already sweating all over the place. The shirt, for me, helps catch the sweat. Because one of the gross things, now this place, they keep it really clean, really, really, really clean. They scrub it down after each class. But one of the gross things about the end of yoga classes, because you're barefoot, everybody's barefoot. You're on your mat with your little towels, and it's real fucking fruity fruit fly shit. But I like it. It's good. It's a great workout. It does get me, like, focused. It gets me, like, helps me calm down. And, and it's good shit. But one of the most disgusting things, I would put this in one of the top five gross things that's ever happened to me and like i said there's it's probably about i'd say 75 percent women 60 percent of them are are like official like good looking chicks not necessarily but they're in shape not necessarily all like model pretty but people are in shape in there it's it's like younger people you know like you know like i don't see anybody over 50 in in my yoga classes Uh, you know like they're all they're like 20 something 22 23 24, they're downward dogging, and you got the, and, and listen, I'm in there, you, 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 they're, they're downward dogging, and you, you got the fucking, the asses, and the fucking, the, the vaginas, and the tits, right in your fucking face, there's no way to avoid seeing it, the snapper, the snappers are right fucking there, the asses are right there, and you're not looking, you're trying to survive, okay, but it's all over the fucking place, it's not even distracting because, like I said, you're, you're just, everybody's just in there trying to survive and you're very namaste, which means uh, something. I don't remember what it means. It means something. It's like the big phrase at the end. You go namaste. But at the end of a yoga class, here's what happened. I stepped in three consecutive puddles of other people's sweat, barefoot, and, and, and I might as well have stepped in human shit barefoot. It was disgusting. Ding. It was fucking gross. Granted, probably I stepped in three puddles of good looking chick sweat. I don't give a fuck if it's Giselle Bunchkin or 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 J Lo or any fucking body, fucking Venus and Serena. I don't want to step in anybody else's sweat. Nobody. My little sons, those are probably the only people sweat who I wouldn't bat an eye at. My my kids. And they don't even sweat that much. But I step, boom, puddle. Boom, right foot puddle. Boom, left foot puddle. And I was fucking disgusted. Disgusted. So now they say don't bring any shoes in there. Fuck that shit. I bring my flip-flops during the beginning. I walk them. I put them in the corner. I hide them under my my extra t-shirt and my towel. And then as soon as the class is over, I put my flip-flops on. I don't give a fuck because that is disgusting. You know, and granted, they, they do clean it up. And everything is kosher, and it's very, very hypoallergenic, and everything is clean. But, but, but you need to, when you walk out of a, of a hot yoga class or any kind of gym or any kind of CrossFit, uh, you need to, like, watch where you're stepping because it's like stepping on jellyfish. It is so nasty. I stepped in these other people's sweat, and, and it's just a sensation and, like, uh, like that I, I, it was just disgusting. I'll tell you about the I fell. 
So I'm in there doing, you know, a, a tree pose, which is basically, uh, you know, you, you have your, your arm up and your leg on your back, uh, your one arm's forward, and, and, and let's say your left arm is forward, and, and you're, you're leaning forward, and, and you have your right leg up like a fucking, like Natalie Portman in Black Swan, like a ballerina, and, and, and they shouldn't even, this should be advanced, this was, shouldn't even be happening with people like me, I shouldn't even be allowed in a room where you're doing a tree pose, and, and it might not even be called a tree pose, no, 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 it was, a, it was a standing split, it was a fucking standing split, namaste, basically, you have two hands down and you're like touching in front of your feet. And, and, and then you lift your, let's say you lift your right leg and you, you, you keep one leg, one hand down to balance yourself and your right leg is up all the way behind you as high, as high as you could go like a T, like an L, right? You got your balls hanging out and everything. And, and then you, you, you keep your left hand down to brace yourself because there's no way anyone could do it without bracing themselves. So I'm doing this. This is like 35 minutes into the hot yoga class and I fell. I, I didn't just stumble. I fucking fell. Boom which you could imagine was very disruptive to the hot yoga class. And the teacher who will remain, uh, who will remain uh, uh, anonymous, because it wasn't his, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't his fault, he said, excuse me. And I said, fuck, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, and I was like, I hurt myself. And he went on to, you know, well, maybe, you know, maybe you shouldn't be in this class. Listen, motherfucker, you didn't, you didn't say anything about any of this. You know, and, and the, the whole class stopped and they were like, are you okay? Are you all right? And I was like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, I just like got my shit. Well, I didn't get all my shit. I, I took my towel and got the fuck out of there. I had to wait because my mat was back. But, but the falling and then I, afterwards, you know, like they were like, well, you, why are you signing up for this class if you're not ready? I said, like, I've fucking taken the class like seven times. This time I just happened to like, you know, I, things went red and I, and I fell. I fell doing a, uh. Uh, maybe it was a tree pose. Oh, it was a standing split. But he really shamed me, this fucking guy. I had a, a girl tell me she listens to the I Am Rapport podcast and to make sure I kick Fafa Fui's ass in, 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 uh, in fantasy football. Which threw me off because the whole time during the class, I was like, what kind of fucking yoga te- teacher would be listening to this filth? I, I mean, I, the I Am Rapport podcast is a worldwide phenomenon. But, but I don't suspect any really legitimate yoga teacher should be listening to this type of shit. Like, you should be like, you know, I don't know, counting rocks or, you know, planting plants or, you know, saving goldfish, some shit like that. I just don't feel like yoga teachers should be listening to this and then worry about me beating Fa Fa Fui in fantasy football. It just threw me off the whole class. So I was just like feeling like this woman who she, she knows the she knows, you know, what I talk about and the loaf talk and, and, you know, my fuck style is buck wild. And she knows I don't pick up my dog shit. I just felt like she knew more about me than, than, than it was like a violation of my privacy. Not that I don't want the whole world to listen to, but the, like the fact that the yoga teacher was listening to the Iron Rapport podcast and listening to me curse out Matt Berry and, and the, the Howard Stern's, it just felt like some sort of violation. You know, like I remember one time uh, I was getting a, 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 a blood test. And right when the lady was about to put the blood in, to do a full blood test, check for everything in my 20s, you know, everything, you know, everything. She sits there, she says, you know, I really like that film Zebrahead. Boom, then she sticks the fucking needle into me. And I don't know if she was doing it to distract me, but I was like, listen, there's a time and a place. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. But, but when you fucking, you know, it's like when the doctor has his finger up your ass giving you the old, uh, what is it, the, the prostate exam. I don't want to be talking, okay? I'm not happy. You're not happy doing it. I hope not. You know, it's just another asshole that you got a fucking finger. I'm sure any doctor worth his salt is not into it, you know, but it's just it's just one of these things. It's just you got to do it. You got to fucking do it. You got to get the finger. When you get a certain age, you got to give you a prostate. But don't, I've never had this, but I'm always just like, just let's, let's just get through this. Just let's just get through this. Just stick your finger up my ass. I'm going to act like it's not happening. You act like it's not happening. Hopefully everything is good and we don't need to discuss it or do it again until the next time I see you, which hopefully is a year to 16 months from now. But it's I don't want to be just talking like, oh, so how's the summer been? Boom, when that fucking finger's up their ass. I, you know, and I don't know, who knows? I don't know if they stick the middle finger or, or the index finger up your ass. But it's never, it's never a pleasant thing. 
It's never a pleasant thing. And, and I always feel so like, does my asshole stink? What does it look like? I, I just, I'm sorry to use, I don't like vulgarity. I, I know you're going to be like, what are you talking about, Mike Rapp? I, I don't like to use that term, but I, I'm just, when, I'm, when, it, when it's happening, when you're at the doctor and, and it's happening, and it'll happen to you. Some people are like, you're old. I'm not fucking old, okay? I'm over 40. You got to get your prostate checked out, okay? I also have ulcerative colitis, which is a whole other episode, but I have ulcerative colitis, okay? And I don't know if you know what that is. It's like Crohn's disease and, you know, irritable bowel syndrome, it's in that family. So I've, had, I've got a lot of, you know, large intestines, small intestine, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of ass stuff. It's, it's in remission now, knock on wood, but it's a serious disease and I've lived with it since I was 17. And, uh, you know, so, you know, but nonetheless, even if I had, didn't have ulcerative colitis, uh, you know, no one wants to get their prostate. It's not something you look forward to. It's, it's, it's like the dentist, like I, I'm sure for women, it's like going to the gynecologist, but you know, uh, it's just really, it's a lot. And, and it has nothing to do with being gay or straight. Cause you're probably like, oh, you're home. No, 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 nobody. Straight men, gay men, nobody wants to get your prostate checked out. It's just not cool. I don't know how the fuck I got on my my getting fingered in my ass. I don't know how I got there. That wasn't even part of what I was going to discuss today. I have no fucking clue how we got here. Um, but uh, we're going to call my man G. Moody. We're going to go over everything. We're going to talk about J- Donald Trump. I can't, I, you know, just when I was starting to kind of like the fact that Donald Trump didn't give a fuck, every time I started kind of like, yo, I like this guy because he's just rogue and nuts, then he takes it too far. He takes it too far, and then I realize you can never, ever, ever, you're never doing shit. You're not a leader. You're a big mouth fuck with, with whose hair may or may, may not be duct taped to his head. Okay, so we're going to get into I don't like what you said about McCain. I wish McCain was a little early, a little younger. He'd fuck you up. John McCain would fuck up Donald Trump in his prime. I bet you John McCain would fuck him up now. John McCain has killed people. Okay, he's a fucking war hero. And you're going to take he said that fucked up comment about John McCain not being a war hero. You don't like your war heroes, war heroes to be captured. Fuck you. How fucking dare you? How dare you? You're not doing a podcast like this. You're not just doing a, a shit-talking exposition. You, you're trying to be the president, and this is how you talk? Insulting prisoners of war? What a fucking asshole. What a fucking asshole, man. What a fucking scumbag. What a fucking no class, never did anything, fucking never had to fucking do you struggle. You're going to fucking make a comment like that, you fucking scumbag. What a fucking, can I get sued for saying this? I hope I, this isn't, this is whatever, man. What a fucking no class motherfucker. And you have the audacity to try to run for the presidency of the United States. Get the fuck out of here. You're not winning shit. You got fucking fired off of NBC. You alienated the Latin community in this country. And then you had the audacity to say that you'll win the Latin vote. Like, I could say whatever I want about you, but then I'm gonna, you guys are going to vote for me. You arrogant, pompous fuck you. You're out of your fucking mind. And then you say that thing about John McCain, like it's some tongue in cheek, like you're like fucking like a, making some like a, like a diss tape, like a diss track. Get the fuck out of here. You're not winning shit, Donald Trump. I'm sorry. And you look like shit. You need to get in hot yoga. You look bloated. You look fucked up. Your hair is fucked up. Your skin color's fucked up. And you're just a fucking arrogant fuck, man. And, and you, make, you make New Yorkers look like shit because you're associated with the great city of New York except for you're with the elitist people and I'm not talking about the hipster elite I'm talking about the 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 half percent not even the one percent the fucking the the truck drivers the hard-working construction workers the train workers the nine to fivers you you, you shit on everybody this is Iron Rapport podcast all right baseball is in full swing and you could be part of the action all season long At DraftKings.com, the official daily fantasy partner of Major League Baseball. Daily fantasy means no season-long commitments, just instant cash and instant gratification. Why wait until the end of the season to get paid when you can win huge prizes every day? At DraftKings, it's like a brand new season every time you play. Every single time you want to play, you go to DraftKings.com, and it's like opening day. Pick your pitchers, pick your position players, 
and you pick up your cash. That's it. That's how you win. Ask this guy, Peter from Colorado. Look him up. Guy named Peter from Colorado. Last year, this guy won a million dollars in one fucking day. Check this guy out. Peter from Colorado. Go to DraftKings.com. Guy won one million dollars in one day simply by playing fantasy baseball at DraftKings.com. New contestants start daily, so hurry to DraftKings.com right now and use promo code RAPAPORT, R-A-P-A-P-O-R-T, to play for free in today's $10,000 fantasy baseball contest. That's DraftKings.com, 